All right. Welcome to the first lesson on, well, our first unit for the, uh, or this unit of Medieval Times. So, um, anyways, this this first lesson is, well, I'm not going to be going through the PowerPoint a ton here. I'm probably just going to be leaving it on this front page because there's something I need to explain that, well, might have been good to have a PowerPoint with, uh, some explanations with, but it uh, needs to be explained first before we can get into Medieval Life. Now, if you notice there, it talks about medieval times being the era uh, beginning with the fall of Rome, uh, and, uh, the Roman Empire, that is, to the emergence of modern Western society. And time-wise, we're looking at basically you know, 500 AD or CE, however you want to put that, uh, to 1450. Again, there's, those are just rounded around numbers for dates. There's no real official dates of like, this is when it definitely started and this is when it definitely ended. Uh, uh, if you wanted to talk about the idea or going to the idea like I wanted to start, well, you, there's actually great arguments to saying that medieval times started in the 300s uh, uh, CE and did not fully and totally end until even the early 1900s. Uh, there's still vestiges of, of what medieval times was like even then, especially in places like Russia, um, late 1800s at least. Uh, but anyways, but that's the, the general time period, about a thousand years of just this in-between time period of classical antiquity, the Greeks and Roman, uh, Roman era in Western civilization uh, versus the, the modern Western civilization, which starts off with things like, if you've heard of the Renaissance, the Reformation, in most definitely the age of exploration, uh, which all happen in conjunction with each other. They all happen, uh, they're contemporaries, they happen at the same time. Um, anyways, I, I hope you're following along right now, but the main thing I'm trying to explain is, is that in introducing this time period, which is in between antiquity and, and modern times, well, we need to know how we got to this point. Why is this in an in-between time period? And if I was to really get into this and explain it, well, there'd be a whole, I mean, entire college classes are taught just on, just on this idea of this just fall of antiquity and into... Uh, medieval times, so uh, Dark Ages, Middle Ages. These are those are all names for medieval times. So, and with that being said, I am going to try to explain simply the transition of thought process from antiquity uh, into into medieval times, uh, and it's well, it's kind of a tough one. Uh, I, when I say a tough one, uh, I forget that. The idea that I just said tough. It's when I say it's tough. It's it's tough to summarize to explain it. But I try to do the best I can, and just know that the example I'm getting or the explanation I'm going to give right now doesn't cover all angles and all aspects, but gives you a general idea of why your uh, European nations and peoples were the way they were during medieval times versus say Rome, and then how we changed out of that to get to where we are today. So with that, we need to start with basically the fall of Rome and what was happening at that point, uh, talking about 1,500 years ago. Um, there's nothing like that happened all of a sudden, like boom, it's gone. Like usually we look at the year 476 AD as when Rome falls to, um, to Oda Asser, Oda Kerr, however you say his name, of the Ostrogoths, uh, barbarian basically. And they have the fall of the Western Roman Empire, which is considered the fall of Rome, even though the Eastern Roman Empire continues. Again, it's convoluted, and I feel like I'm explaining too much. But just fall of Rome, that's usually when it happens. But really, the fall of Roman civilization, the fall of Roman life, the way things were, happened before that. And this is why a lot of people would argue that you could say the fall of Rome happens in the 300s. And it goes like this, basically. Uh, Rome after going through a lot of corruption uh, in their government, uh, losing, you could say, the ideals that they were founded on, and most definitely losing the ideals that they were founded on, especially when they went from a republic to an empire, and then uh, the corruption of the empire is going bad. They have a few good emperors, and then a lot of bad emperors, a few good emperors, and some bad emperors, and just... Anyways, Let's put it this way. If you're just a normal Roman citizen, it gets to the point where you don't know who you can trust. You don't know who's going to provide for your safety. Uh, the Roman armies don't seem to be able to do it because tons of barbarian hordes are, are coming across the borders uh, from Germany, from Central Asia, uh, from uh, Africa and the Middle East, where it's just you're just being bombarded on, on all sides. 
and you start looking to who can protect me, who can who can solve my problems, you could say. Uh, and, and you start also seeing a, a uh, destruction of infrastructure, meaning that all of a sudden things aren't as available because you don't have the Rome, Roman infrastructure in place. The, the Roman government, they're in this, especially the Roman armies protecting, you could say, trade and shipments. All of a sudden, uh, you get start getting Germanic barbarians in charge of the food supplies of Africa, Visigoths in charge of, the, of all the production in Spain. Uh, in southern France, you get the Franks coming in and controlling the rest of what becomes France, named after the Franks. The Angles and Saxons just steal away Britain. And and if you're a Roman citizen, those areas are like, well, either what, what am I going to do? These people are in charge of me now. The Romans don't seem to really care. Uh, the Roman government actually doesn't really seem to care about my well-being. Well, I guess I better go along to get along. And so all of a sudden you have people turning to either local aristocrats, uh, like local Roman nobles and nobility, uh, and uh, people who have, have power and influence and money, and they start turning to the barbarians themselves, uh, just saying, you know, please protect us, basically. Um, and the Roman, as much as the Roman government down in Rome itself, or Ravenna at this time, man, I'm going way too much into, <laughs> into details. I should probably, uh, anyways, I'm not going to start this over, but I hope this is making sense. Basically, life sucks. Life just sucks. You do not feel safe and secure anymore. You're searching for where you can get a sense of safety and security. Um, uh, you don't have access to the stuff you used to have. Life as you know it is done. It's just done. It's like, why, why aren't we getting the shipment of, of wine from Rome? Well, it's not safe to travel there anymore, so we just can't get it. Why aren't we getting our grain from North Africa? Well, it's not safe to be shipped from there anymore. Um, it's hard to get to. Well, I saw grain from North Africa the other day. It's like, well, we had to pay really high prices <laughs> to get that here. And so, therefore, it's a lot more expensive than it used to be. Uh, and it's like, crap, well, how are we going to get our food? Well, why don't you make it? And so all of a sudden you get this Roman populace, all these people that, yeah, you have a lot of people that know how to farm and things like that, but you get a lot of people that didn't. And all of a sudden they're forced into that situation where it's, it's you got to work if you're going to survive. And so people that are highly educated, you know, they've had their lives in any case, you could say like the Roman middle class, all of a sudden find themselves being put in situations where they're begging toward, for landlords to give them a job or to somehow learn how to farm themselves, maybe from their own personal slaves, uh, to support themselves and their families. And then they also start realizing, it's like, well, it'd be nice to be protected from, say, bandits and things like that, or <laughs> barbarian hordes coming through. It's like, well, what do we do? Well, let's have someone that we provide our food from, uh, provide, provide our food to, like we'll give a portion of our food in return for protection. And that protection could come from some local Roman aristocrat who just has maybe a, a, a local guard, maybe a few hundred soldiers that he can offer that protection with. Maybe the barbarians themselves, who are known as the, the, the Germans, the Goths. Um, but, uh, maybe they can offer that protection. And, many, and most often that was actually who you went to. And it's like, all right, well, you know, the Roman government doesn't seem to care about me. They don't seem to even be there anymore. We're not getting stuff. So how about we provide some of our sustenance to you and you protect us? And I, again, this is my imagining. I shouldn't say my imagining. Uh, I don't know how far widespread this thought process would be, although I'm definitely positive the thought process was there, is that people kept thinking that one day it'll go back to normal. One day... Uh, and, you know, a Roman emperor will, will arise, you know, God will, shi will shine his favor down upon us, and we will have everything back to the way it was. Um, uh, you know, the grain shipments will start coming the way it was, and the grain will be cheap like it was again. The wine will flow freely, uh, that type of thing. Uh, jobs will be a plenty. Uh, my kids will go back to school again. <laughs> God, the fact By the way, I've given this lesson quite a few times. I uh, explained this quite a few times, and this is kind of stark because <laughs> I'm giving this as a video lesson right now in the age of COVID, and holy cow, the, the, if you're not seeing the correlations from what I'm saying right now to <laughs> the year we've been going through. Anyways, let's just, hop, let's just hope that history doesn't repeat itself exactly this time around. Anyways, getting back to what I was talking about. 
and uh, you know people probably have this mindset that things would go back to normal things would go back to the way they way they were you know th this is just a temporary thing where life is hard and we can get through this you know well, let's be resilient about it but time goes on you know 5 years goes by 10 years goes by 20 years goes by and it, it doesn't happen like that you know what has changed and what they've adapted to has become well i don't like this term but you could say like the new normal um and it just seems like this just that's the way it's going to be uh, and but there's one major focus so with this thought process that these former now former roman citizens have is the idea of like wow we need to eat we need food and we need safety and security and those are the two primary things that they're thinking of the idea of education is kind of out the window uh, the idea of innovation and thinking of new things is a little bit out the window. There is some there, but the idea of like societal innovation, not really. They're going backwards. Uh, so, uh, but then you get to the next generation. That is what I'm leading up to. When you get to this next generation, uh, where you have uh, uh, kids who are born in this in this time period, and they're being raised primarily to learn how to provide for families through farming and things like that with the, the ability to grow food and they get very good at that and then if need be and usually need be to defend themselves learn how to fight basically to farm and fight becomes the two major things that most everybody in in uh, the mediterranean world and in europe are now focused on and the ideas that have been around for forever for hundreds of years uh, you know mathematics uh, philosophy and all that stuff that you went to school for, uh, learning about the law and the Roman Constitution. It's not needed. Now, do you have parents do the best they can to teach their kids that stuff? Yes, I would assume so. Well, I know there were some, but I would assume more than, than what we know of as well. But not as much, like you don't have as much. Like Because farming and fighting is so at the forefront of your mind because it's all about survival, uh, and the idea of, well, provide, making a better life for yourself is not there any longer. Uh, it's all about survival again. And so the first generation that suffered this transition, you could say, from just this stable Roman world to an instable world uh, uh, based on survival, they die off, you know, just pass, they pass away. And now you have the second generation in place where they don't know as much. They don't have as much of the education. They're good with the farming and fighting. They've actually, they advance in that area. In fact, medieval times is excellent in those two areas. Like there's actually tons of innovation in medieval times when it comes to farming and fighting, but those are the two main areas. Is there the other stuff here and there too, like the philosophy and mathematics? Yeah, but not on a great societal basis. It's not like people are going to school for it. Um, uh, you know, you got those little, te you got those teachers here and there that are, you know, definitely stand out because they're the smart ones. So, anyways, it's one of the reasons why we call these the dark ages is you lose an overall societal loss of knowledge and understanding and cohesion. So, uh, I know there's a lot of medieval scholars out there that argue with the fact that, you know, it's a dark ages because there were still a lot of great things going on and great minds coming about, and that's true but not in a grand sense across uh, society. And uh, it was not a time of opportunity, at least the way we think of opportunity or the American dream, let's put it that way. Or even you could say the Roman dream, the way they used to have it. So anyways, I hope I've explained that well, but again, you have that second generation and then it gets even worse for the third generation. And by the third and fourth generation, it just became the way it was, where, yes, you had people that felt like that they were citizens, but all of a sudden now, because their fathers were the farmers and the low-down ones and the uneducated ones and their the fathers before them, kind of putting that, them in that position, now it just becomes the way it is. And then it gets set in stone with just saying, well, if you're born to that family, that's what you're supposed to do. If you're born to that family that's on that land that's supposed to farm and make food, then that's what you're supposed to do. If you're born to that family that, you know, has produced great soldiers and blah, 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 then that's what you're supposed to do. And it just becomes the way it was. And it stays that way for a thousand years. Uh, and just so you know, our society today, the reason why we talk about this so much and this, the static nature of the social class is what's called feudalism in medieval times of you're born to who you are and you can't change it because God wants it that way or whatever. Uh, well, that's one of the main reasons why it stays there. Whatever other reasoning they had to say that you have to be that way, uh, you can't change. 
like just so you guys know the society you live in especially american society but other societies as well mostly western society in general countries like france germany britain denmark blah 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 and how we have our distances that's one thing that well, we all agree on, and hopefully we will always agree on, is that uh, <laughs> we can create a world of opportunity and freedom uh, where we're not told that you have to be that way because you're born that way, uh, that you can have more control of your, of your life in a, in a country that offers that freedom. So anyways, I just put it there. I'm gonna, actually going to show us, I'll show some lessons later and uh, talk about this more. But uh, again, I, I apologize for kind of this talking head video that you have here for this lesson, but, and I wish I had more like pictures to show or things like that to go along with that. I apologize, but I feel it is an absolutely necessary thing to explain that transition from Roman life and the way things were and how good it was to medieval times where life is unstable and it's all about survival and how, well, when we get into, when we actually, when we get into our modern history units, that it's basically everything about it is a rejection of what medieval life was like. You know, we fantasize about medieval history all the time. We love movies about it and books about it. It's, it's fun. But in reality, it's a time period we never, ever want to go back to. Uh, not the idea of the way it looks, but the way it feels and how societies were run and just that lack of opportunity and lack of, of freedom. So anyways, that being said, uh, uh, I hope you took at least some notes or got this down a little bit, uh, and I uh, will see you in the next lesson.